gay Green Lantern for a while, which mm -hmm. I believe they did. Uh, black Green Lantern, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Which they, made makes sense. And it nobody, look, nobody batted an eye about that. No. Because, and, hey, maybe we're not all bigots like people want us uh, to think we are, right? Just, just make the Doctor a woman and no one's going to care. But to turn it into, like, this platform for political messaging, that's not what Doctor Who is. Star yeah. Trek, yes. You the original comic book Iron Man, he was in a wheelchair. Yeah. Robert Downey Jr. is not in a wheelchair. No. He could have been. Well, actually, it that would have been would have been a great story. It, it's kind of like if you change the the features of the story, you better have a good reason for doing it. Kitchen sink microscopy. <laughs> I was gonna say, get on with it. <laughs> uh, I'm uh, Louis Armstrong, and we'd uh, love it if you would like and share and subscribe to the channel. <laughs> so, uh, you know, welcome to another fireside chat version of uh, KSM. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let's make it official. <laughs> oh yeah, there we go. There's our little tiny fire. Okay, so welcome, welcome to that. And uh, you know, Casey and I, we write our own music, and chances are there's going to be something new at the end of the episode. So stick around and and uh, check it out. So Casey, what 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 should we talk about today? Well, I think uh, it's was, it was something that's been in the news. Uh, I mean, for a long time, but it's it's kind of been ramping up lately, and I I think there's a, a great deal to talk about here because I, I think a lot of the ramp up is sort of this mob mentality or you know like a peer pressure sort of situation, and and that's this whole like um, I guess the most recent hashtag is like go woke go broke, mm -hmm. you know th th this this entire like. Uh, I don't know, just branding something as being woke has kind of become one of those, like, it's actually a good thing to do it, but it's being used as kind of a like derogatory slur. Yeah, so... But it's also, like, you can do it for the wrong reasons. Well, <laughs> and that, that's what I was going to get at. Like, I understand the, the, the sentiment, mm -hmm. um, but I think what people take issue with is companies doing things like from a virtue sing signaling standpoint like yeah. they don't as a company really believe these things they're doing it for uh, to get more customers or to get some kind of uh, uh, attention in that regard and, and I mean it's it's evident like well for instance um, every time Pride Month rolls around mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. throw out the the, the tweets showing all the different companies and how they ha they have the you know they rainbowify their logo mm -hmm. only in the U.S. But if you go to like you know a Middle Eastern country, that same company's logo is the same as it always was. And you think well, like okay, well in the U.S. We, we're we've come a long way in that regard. And and you know I don't know that there needs to be as much push for progress as their say like would need to be in um, Saudi Arabia when it comes right. to things like that. And so why if they're so gung ho about this, why don't they do it there more than anything? 
It, well, they can't really apply social pressure to a society that they aren't a uh, functioning member of, I, I suppose. Maybe. But, uh, I mean, the bottom line well, is, like, you're... it's good to do this stuff for the right reasons, but, I mean, really, it's... It's the new I have a black friend. Only now it's look, we have a black little mermaid. Yeah. You well know? yeah, Disney is a good example of that where I like it feels so artificial. That that I think is what I, I mean, I don't honestly have a problem with any of this stuff, but I can see why people get that sense because it feels so fake. Like they're not doing it because they're just doing it. Like, right. oh well we chose to incorporate these particular characters and, and these are the actors that are playing those characters and they happen to be they look this way or are this way or something. No, it feels very shoehorned in like it was done artificially. Yeah. And, and and that feels disingenuous, I guess. Like, to, to me at least. It's like, yeah. you know, hey, there's nothing wrong with like, well, I mean, think about uh, speaking of movies and stuff like Black Panther, right? Mm-hmm. Black Panther was not a white character that they substituted. Yeah, he's always been black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or a uh, blade. And why can't they do that? Yeah, why can't they create new characters? A new character. Yeah, if you want. How to hard have is some... that? Like, why is yeah. it always recycling these days? Like, uh, oh. well, we can't come up with new characters. We've got to turn this one gay or turn yeah. that one black. You <laughs> yeah, know? Like, exactly. Like, what? it is forced. It is. It really. is. And and I and I think people are kind of sick of that. And maybe that's. That's why that that ends up happening because it feels so so fake. It's it's like there are, there are situations though where I do think it's kind of endearing, like when the new J.J. Abrams Star Trek made Sulu a gay man. It was kind of a nod and and a respectful nod to George Takei, and yeah. he was all about that. He was like, that really is like. <laughs> A it, big thank you. To, it, yeah, and like, I think people like the the audience would would accept that and appreciate it too, like yeah. because I mean yeah George K. He's gay, so like hey, okay, well, why not? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, and I, I think that that's oh a my. reasonable. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> I I think that's a reasonable um, change to to the character, but like just arbitrarily changing stuff because, oh, it's the popular thing to do. Yeah. It almost, like, to me it feels like it it belittles the the message that that is presumably being gone for, and it, it feels very much like a corporate cash grab. Like, they're, they're not doing it because they really believe that. They're doing it to make money to, or something. Or maybe there's, like, some executive in there that just, like, wants to push a message or something. And it's it's very evident that that's what's happening. Like like you said, why not just make new characters, new stories like involving other like other people. Like if you yeah, if you want to have some diverse cast or something, then we'll tell a new story. Don't take an established beloved story and change it like in a, in a significant way. Yeah, that that's like that, I, and it's like okay, you know, people I, are very quick to judge those who are judging those things as if they're oh well they're like bigoted in some way, but I don't think that that's no. largely the case. I think people are just like hey, this is my childhood story. Like I loved the Goonies when I was a little kid, and imagine if somebody took the Goonies. And gender swapped everybody and made them all black or something. It'd be like it would feel weird. Or what if, what if, like, the Cosby Show was all of a sudden white? Yeah, you know, like it was just white characters. And like, the how, only how black people... characters are complete idiots. Yeah, yeah. And, and, like, and, like, how would people feel? That about would that? not fly at all. No, no. Like that's, that's like, hmm. so, and, and that's the double edge, or that not. Um, that's the double standard. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's it's fine. To do that, when it comes to crowbarring in, um, you know these uh, disadvantaged populations, let's say, mm-hmm. um, or presumably, like, yeah, you know. <clears throat> and I get, I get why they do it the way they do it because creating a new character 
doesn't have the backing of you know the notoriety and, and all that stuff like but if you tell a good story yes that won't matter yes. no one cares if you tell a good story and that mm -hmm. is after all what filmmaking is all about yeah is telling so a good instead story. you take a good story and you like completely flip it on its head to to accommodate this drastic change in the main characters. And, yeah, and the changes feel very forced. That's the yeah. problem. And if the and, movie sucks, and you say it sucks, oh, it must be because you're a bigot. Oh, yeah, like the 2016 Ghostbusters, you know. <laughs> oh, you're sexist because you didn't like it. No, it wasn't that good of a movie. And that's the thing. It's like, okay, I honestly, I don't care if somebody wants to do a different interpretation. That happens all the time. But make it better than the original, or at least as good as the original, you know, or put a yeah. different spin on it or something. But no, it's like verbatim, cut and paste, but just, oh, we just pulled these characters out and substituted these other characters, which feels very, almost cheap. Like, it, 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 it very much diminishes like the presumed message that is being gone for there. You know the the way that this goes well and has for decades is when the character, the story arc already has an existing uh precedent for a change like Doctor Who. Yeah. Or um the Green Lantern or mm -hmm. something. Yeah. Like, you know, it's always like every so often like somebody else entirely and so you have a gay green lantern for a while which mm -hmm. i believe they did a black green lantern mm -hmm. and so on and so forth which and, made makes sense and it nobody nobody batted an eye about that no because and, and, hey maybe we're not all bigots like people want us uh, to think we are right exactly <laughs> like I, well in the doctor who thing like i i mean you know there was the um comic relief uh, video that was done um, like for fundraising back in the day where the doctor was a woman uh, at one point in time and that was kind of the end of the that episode essentially and nobody nobody thought anything of it because it, like well that's entirely plausible it just so happens that rolling the dice this many times has been a guy but it could easily be a woman and there were female time lords you know that that was a thing um, and uh, the 13th Doctor, like, being a woman was never a big deal. It was when people started to see it and realize, oh, it's not just Doctor Who. They're, they're shoving this kind of message into this rather than it just being fun. Like, yeah. Doctor Who has always been campy and fun and entertaining and you know maybe thought-provoking but but never it was never like political and and that, that was the thing that people took issue with is it completely distorted the original theme of Doctor Who yeah and, and, and but then you know you get out there and, and talk about it on the interwebs and stuff and say well you know I don't th this isn't really that good and then people pounce on you like what what you have a problem with women it's like no it's not the woman it it's like the, they're going too far with this mm -hmm. like it, it just just make the doctor a woman and no one's gonna care but to turn it into like this platform for political messaging that's not what doctor who is star trek yes you could yeah. absolutely do that because star trek had that in there like it's been part of the core of Star Trek throughout, but Doctor Who has never been that. And, uh, yeah. So, I don't know. I, it, like, it just, it, it, it kind of, it depends on... I, I mean, I, I agree with you. Like, I, I think the, the, the point, like, if it's um, genuine, yeah. is, is valid. Like, okay, you know, sure, why not? Like, there's, there's nothing wrong with that, and, and certainly within the context of a story you're telling, um, nobody should really care that, that there's differences. I mean, shit, we're all people, 
at the end of the day, we're all human beings. It's like, like the, the, but like the, I think, I guess what, what I personally take issue with, with all this like swapping of features, it, it I don't know. It, it it's not that somebody just wanted to tell a story. It's they wanted to state a statement. Yeah. Like they wanted to make a statement. It like irrespective of the source material. And and it's one thing if you do your own thing, an original production, mm -hmm. then go ahead and do what you want, right? Yeah. Like that's completely fine. But if you take something that already existed and then change up a bunch of stuff for no reason and honestly it doesn't even matter to me like if it's gender swapped or like skin color swapped or cultural swap or whatever like that doesn't really matter like but it, it's kind of like if you change the the features of the story you better have a good reason for doing it hey, here's the part that I also want to uh, highlight is that the uh, hipster humanists that are coming out in droves to call people bigots are completely missing uh, entire legitimate arguments. Like, the, you know, the flip side of things where something else was injected in that's more, like, socially acceptable or, you know, what. So, like... Uh, basically like erasing culture or disability or color or something so like the original comic book iron man he was in a wheelchair yeah robert downey jr's not in a wheelchair no he could have been well actually it that would have made would have been a great story that's that is what i was gonna say would have made the story that much more interesting yeah like how many disabled superheroes do you see like the ones that we have just get wiped away, you know, yeah. like, and, and, and why no, aren't they crying about, about that, you know? That's a really good point. Um, man, because that, well, and, and I and, guarantee and you, stories, I yes, can guarantee, like, well, sure, but yeah. stories are, are um, like an expression of, of our human condition. Yeah. It, it's, yeah, and, and so I think it's relevant. Um, you, but I, mean, I, I could see this happening now, where somebody decides to go back to the original, the original source material, and do it like that, where you know Iron Man's character is uh, disabled, and people can be like, "Oh, they changed it," and it's like, "No, actually, it, that was the way it was yeah. originally," and and they just changed it for this movie, like that. See, that would be a movement I could stand behind, is, like, set it back to what it was. You yeah. Know, if it can be done fluidly, you know, because it is important to not upset stories that drastically if there's no good reason to, because, and I know that's subjective, but, you know, mm -hmm. like, it, it can really, like, ruin the whole thing. Mm -hmm. it, it really can, and not for any kind of, like, reason like oh uh, women aren't as good as men or some bullshit like that that's not mm -hmm. true of course but yeah what what it is is like you, you you take something that was part of the fabric of the foundation of of the entire like you know fantasy universe and there's a like a butterfly effect that mm -hmm. that it has where like yeah it could work but it could also like seriously screw it up so well, and, and, and also, a lot of these stories are part of people's childhood. It's, it's like, part of their upbringing and, and are really important. Like, for me, The Goonies is one of those. It's, like, a really special story. The Princess Bride is another one. Labyrinth and stuff. So, if the, you know, if somebody seemingly disrespectfully recreates that, um, then... I'm gonna take issue with it, no matter what. I like. I don't care about the, the reasons. Just tell a good story, damn it. Yeah. You know. And I get the idea of people wanting to incorporate characters that are relatable uh, for a variety of people. And, and you know, maybe that's 
maybe that's the good-hearted nature of the studio executives in, in, in yeah. a lot of these. I doubt it because they're just wanting, they're about the bottom line. So clearly there's another uh, motive there. Mm-hmm. But, you know, then t- don't water down that person's uh, like relation to the character by rehashing something like, oh, you know, we just kind of cheaply just, you know, cut and pasted right. this character in here. <laughs> like, what, what does that say about this company's, uh, like, view of you yeah. as somebody who might be a minority or, uh, like, a different person or something? No. If they sit there and skillfully and carefully craft a really awesome story that involves you like somebody you can relate to then i mean that that has so much more value than just like oh yeah we're gonna take the little mermaid and make her black like what that just feels (laughs) so cheap well it it kind of says like uh we don't think there's like a, a real valid you know likable relatable superhero character that could be fulfilled by x feature so we're just going to supplant an existing one with that feature you know you're basically kind of diminishing them by i mean it's it's like going a little too far like holding doors open for somebody in a wheelchair or whatever when like you know, they're like, you know, I could, I could do that myself. It's, it's fine. Like, yeah. you know, like you, you don't, you don't need to go so far because you might end up having the opposite effect. Well, it's like the bigotry of low expectations, essentially. Yeah. And, and, and this is the thing that's most frustrating because I am one who enjoys stories from all cultures and, and I kind of absorb them, like collect them. And I can tell you, throughout the world and throughout time, there are so many really awesome stories that could be told yeah. in, in, in all kinds of cultures. And like, so you, you already have your work done. There's already a really awesome story there. Like, you know, just go ahead and make that into a movie. Like, where's yeah. the Anansi the Spider movie? That, that's one of my favorite stories, by the way, out of, out of Africa. Like, I love that um and like i would love to see that made into a movie and that's that's appropriate like it it's its own thing centered in that particular time space and why is nobody going for that there's there's like books and and tales that people have told for centuries and that that are ripe for the taking well there's that that uh i'm blanking on his name but like during the Civil War era, there was this black guy that like was a slave and got freed, and then like became a war hero and like served in in um, Congress or something, and oh, and just yeah. did like a whole bunch of kick ass things in his life. And it's like that would make a great movie, mm-hmm. like, and it's a real true story. Yeah, like that's a superhero like that actually existed. Yeah, like that why can't a- why can't they capitalize on that? Well, especially because the story's already written. Right. Like, your script is basically there. Like, just make it into a movie. Like, uh, it, it that seems so easy and a no-brainer. And, and if it's a popular story, it should be very simple. Like, it will make money. Mm-hmm. But what doesn't make money, and, and I think this kind of goes back to this whole go woke, go broke thing, is when you take an established world uh, or a series of characters or a story or something and you just kind of substitute PC characters for like oh yeah we're you know whatever the the thing of the day is we're just gonna like drag and drop them right in there and like oh that should be good enough and then if anybody complains we'll just be like well you, you know you must be bigoted in some way like well, it, have you ever thought that maybe the movie just sucks ass is that is that a possibility you know, like, because I've seen a few uh, of these movie recreations, and they're just not, they don't have the character of the originals. And even, like, it, it, and that, it, 
There are ones like Beauty and the Beast that weren't swapped in any way. Like, generally, it was pretty close to the original. And that movie sucked ass. Yeah. It, it, it really... Like, well, I wouldn't say it sucked ass. I'd just say it, it, it was kind of boring. The real problem is not coming up with new material. Mm-hmm. Like, like, we really do need fresh stuff. Yeah. They're, they're like... Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, just the I, capitalism I, angle on everything is like, oh, this has always made money. We got to keep making money off of it, and they like beat this dead horse, and and mm-hmm. and then they come upon this time where like it becomes this societal pressure to be woke or whatever, and then they're like, well, we got to keep capitalizing on Superman, but we better make him. Jewish now. Yeah, exactly. Uh, tr- <laughs> truth, justice in the Jewish way. You know, yeah. like, you know what, whatever it is, what, you know, like, plug in something and eventually you're going to find, like, some movie or some other media trying to do that. Well, the problem I see with this, and, and I think this is very prevalent, and we're, we're basically in the 60s of cinema and filmmaking where people got disillusioned with movies and that's why in the 70s things got so weird is or up into the early 80s um, that's how like the black hole and tron got made by disney um because like you had to do something radical and creative now um and but what what's currently going on is that the budgets for for films are so huge that the executives don't want to take a chance on something novel and original, and so they're like, well, you know, this property made a bunch of money and people like it, so we'll just give it like three hundred million dollars, and you know, it'll be like just a a duplicate of the previous movie just kind of done with extra CG that somehow looks shittier than the original. Like, I don't know how that's even possible, but it happens all the time, which just blows my mind. Like, how is this $300 million? Like, I, but I could do that. I could hire a couple people off of Fiverr and give them like $100,000 and they would blow people's mind with how good it looks. Um, and, you know, maybe that's the direction we should be going in, is instead of spending hundreds of millions of dollars on one giant big budget movie that flops, um, why not take that money and divide it up and make, you know, a hundred, two million dollar videos? Like, take some people who are lesser, lesser known you know, like, give them a, an actual, like, you know, take the people who made Sharknado and give them, like, you know, $10 million and be like, hey, can you make a really good movie? It, you know, like, there's enough money to do some that's, awesome stuff. That's a good point. Like, movie theaters are like, well, we're, we're running out of, like, business. Nobody wants to come to the movie theater anymore and pay, like, $20 for a ticket and $50 for a tiny bucket of popcorn (laughs) what's going on why is this happening well it's like there is no shortage of art if you've got these empty theaters go find local movie makers and show their shit you might come across a cash cow there are like now i'm i'm a huge fan of sci-fi um there's a youtube channel called dust that showcases these kind of low budget short like short form films and oh my god some of them are so good and and these were not like big budget productions but there were some really good things and that, that's only one tiny corner of what's available there's all these people that want to tell stories and are really good at it and why is it that the people who can't tell stories and are just like you know telling the same story someone else has told um, why are they getting all the money and all the the advertising revenue when there's some amazing stories out yeah. there 
Well, that could easily, like, uh, you know, Blair Witch Project is a good exa- example of, like, a movie it didn't cost that much to make, made a killing. Yeah. Like, it made so much more. And, and actually, uh, what is it? The, what's the, 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 oh, there was a, there's two movies that have been compared recently. Uh, one very big budget, it's like $300 million, and there's another one that had a much smaller budget that was, like, kind of a true story-ish uh, what's it called? The Sound of Freedom or something? I haven't actually seen it, and, but th- in the opening weekend, that low budget movie got more revenue than the big budget movie did, um, and that says something. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and you know, people are like, "Oh, well, this movie, da da da, and, and, and it's this and it's that," and it's like, well, it, do- it doesn't matter. It's telling a story that yeah. people clearly enjoy. Well, I hear it's not. It's a tearjerker. Um, if you have a heart, um, that's <laughs> that's what I hear. Um, but you know, like, why is that? We don't really have a free market, though. And if we did, we would have that pretty much all the time. Like, people would just put movies out. And word of mouth would tell you what you might want to go see. Mm-hmm. Instead, advertising and hype is what tells us what's good. Yeah. Oh, the other movie was the Indiana Jones movie. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Which, you know, honestly, I think Are it's those like... like one to one, though? Is it like an Indiana Jones story or something? Or the like, Indiana Jones why are pe- 5. Why uh, are people comparing that to The Sound of Freedom? Because of the budget. Oh. Uh, and the and the returns. I mean, so that's the, kind of a bullshit. Comparison. Well, but but this low budget movie won out against this big budget movie. It's like a David and Goliath kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, but like the fourth Indiana Jones was like time to hang it up. So like yes. everyone was already like, uh. yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> but but then why sink so much money? The budget. I think that was one of the most expensive movies ever made. Harrison Ford is the reason. Like, they wanted to put, they wanted to kind of reboot it with Chris Pratt, which Mm -hmm. honestly I think is like, like visually even like a good match. Like he Mm kind of looks like a young Harrison Ford. So that works, you know? Sure. And Harrison Ford was like, no one will ever be Indiana Jones but me. Hmm. Like he actually said that, like I'm paraphrasing, but (sighs) like, yeah. It's his fault. So then why go back and do it again? Right. Like, you're like 80-something years old, man. Like, hang up your hat. Like, and and I get it. Like, the the adventure of the Indiana Jones series is appealing, and I think it's timeless. <laughs> I did see, like, one funny thing on social media where they said, like, Honestly, an 80-year-old archaeology professor that refuses to retire is, like, the most realistic thing in the movies <laughs> I've seen. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay, they're right. So that's a good point. You know? mm-hmm. That's realistic, I guess. But uh, but what happens in the movies is not realistic from an archaeological <laughs> standpoint. Yeah. Like, go ahead and uh, <laughs> shadow an archaeologist and you'll see, yeah. like, how boring it is. Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, yeah. I, we should talk for a minute about like ignorance and hypocrisy, though, because th- this um, overboard woke culture, let's say, uh, they are clearly just moral grandstanding and looking for a fight where wherever they can like crowbar one in. Because what was that movie, uh, The Last Samurai with Tom Cruise? Oh yeah. They were like, well, why did they cast a white guy in that? And it's like, it's a story about a white guy that goes to Japan. Which is actually <laughs> loosely based on a true story. Yeah. Like, that kind of happened. <laughs> so, it, 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 actually, yeah, let's talk about the casting thing. Because um, uh, The Simpsons has been under fire over years. like the, the and, and Family Guy, too. Like, casting their... They're voice actors that, that don't look like or fit the profile of the particular character they're playing. What does that matter? I, it doesn't. It's a cartoon. It's, I know, exactly. But people took issue with it. Like Apu, he's gone now. You know, 
Because, well, it's not an Indian guy. Like, and, and it's a character of, of an Indian guy. And okay, well, yeah, it kind of is. But, yeah. but even... Uh, it is and it isn't, though. It's like, like, the accent was actually pretty spot on. Yeah. Um, like, obviously the character has, like... It's a goddamn cartoon, though. Like, yeah. all the characters... Are like you know like Homer Simpson is like a fat bald white guy that eats donuts and can't do anything right. Yeah, like they're you don't see white guys being like, hey, you know. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> well, well, and, and, and I, it was it. it was still done relatively respectfully. Mm-hmm. Like Apu was a beloved character of the show. Like you know he wasn't like the butt of every joke. All the time. Well, everybody was the butt of a joke uh, throughout that series. Like, it, it, that's just how it was. It's a cartoon. It's a comedy cartoon. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't understand. Like, and also, too, humor is the way to deal with difficult subjects. Like, yeah. if you can't laugh at something, I mean, as long as you're not laughing at someone, um, right? Like individually at someone, um, it's a it's a very good way to address and, and you know make people feel comfortable thinking about difficult things. And, and if we erase that, well, we may never address difficult things. And, and I don't think that's beneficial. To people, society. people should watch like black comedians mm-hmm. because like you know the really good black comedians know what it means to not take yourself so seriously mm-hmm. you know like they'll play off the stereotypes they'll make fun of it you know and and seeing that ha- actually has so much more power mm-hmm. in in creating equal rights because like it introduces a fun and frivolous way to talk about an actual like real serious problem mm-hmm. that really does exist and needs to be addressed But when you put humor behind it, you totally, totally take the air out of any kind of hatred. Like, Uh, yes, just just go into a room full of laughing people and try to spew your bigotry bullshit. Mm -hmm. No one's going to hear you. They're going to. Well, if they do, they're going to laugh at you. Yeah. And then you got nothing. But, well, you know, the people that are like, my feelings are hurt by that joke. They don't even understand humor at nope. all. Like, and, and, what, and they're the ones that need it most. About, yes. What's great about humor is that it humanizes people, too. Mm-hmm. Like, it brings everybody to the same level. Even, if only for a moment. That everybody shares the joke. And in that, we're all equal. Yeah. Even if you're the most angry person on the face of the planet, if you can laugh with another person that you're angry at, um, well then... Deprecation that, that's deprecation is funny because it is highlighting why it's so ridiculous to have that deprecation. You know, mm-hmm. like, like, why is that a societal thing? It doesn't make be. sense. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's part of the joke. That's part of what talking about it or... Highlighting it is all about and making fun of it. Yeah, like yeah, it's oh. like one of my favorite comedians actually is is Bill Burr because he he kind of does focus a lot on like why the fuck are we this stupid about this thing like mm-hmm. and he's just telling in a kind of funny way all this shit that we already know and pointing out like hey look how dumb this is. You know, yep. like, which is actually kind of a classic comedian trope anyway, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Seinfeld was a lot like that. Just yep. in kind of like less of a funny What's delivery. the deal with this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, and I think that's, that's really valuable. Like, we, we shouldn't take life so seriously. No. Because... It's kind of a joke and kind of a game to begin with. Um, and to be able to like laugh at the ridiculousness of things in life makes those things no longer have any power. Um, and that, I think, 
is one of the most valuable things. Yeah. And and movies, films that doing the same thing, it do, you know, it doesn't have to be a comedy. It could be like an action movie or a sci-fi movie or something or one of those love story movies. Um, <laughs> um, but you know, they all kind of paint things in a light that that's digestible. Yeah. Um, and you can't do that through discourse necessarily. It's not as easy, I should say. Yeah. Like you can, in, in like a ninety-minute movie, um, encapsulate a whole lot of thoughts uh, in ways that you can't with years and years of dis discussion. And, you know, as they say, a picture is worth a thousand words, that seeing something on film uh, in a theater or something or on your streaming service um, can have a pr profound impact, uh, in, like in ways that you can't achieve uh, with just like standing up there holding signs and voting and whatnot. Like you can affect real societal change by just simply telling a really good powerful story yeah and people need to get out of their own bubble mm -hmm. like and stop projecting what offends you onto just like a blanket crowd right like uh one of my favorite examples of this uh crawling outside of my own bubble is when i moved from here in the Pacific Northwest to Memphis, Tennessee, which is a predominantly black city. And here I heard nothing but the rhetoric of like, don't say this and don't say that because it will offend black people. Being told this by not black people, mm. of course. Mm -hmm. And they're all like, don't say all lives matter because that offends black people and then what do i see in the supermarket in memphis but a black man wearing an all lives matter shirt yeah <laughs> you know so it's it's really not something that you can paint with broad strokes anyway like of course it offends some black people but not all black people no and, <laughs> and no it, you're right whoever like, it offends that's their fucking problem not yours it is and, and that, that's like third party offense yeah. essentially like you're not part of that culture but you get offended on behalf of somebody else yeah. who probably doesn't, doesn't even, even take it. notice of yeah. it yeah <laughs> that's the thing like you, uh, now now there's 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 room for like okay we should be sensitive to people's concerns yeah. but also there's nothing wrong with being offended just like there's nothing wrong with being terrified. Like, why do people go watch horror movies? You yeah. know, they're yeah. scary. Wh why would you put yourself into that position? <laughs> because it's fucking fun. It's fun to be scared. Mm -hmm. Like, horror movies are scary. Slasher movies, you know, there are lots yeah. of jump scares and stuff. And you know, people enjoy that. Like, it... It's like when somebody makes a cancer joke. I'm not like, hey, yeah, that's not cool. I had cancer. <laughs> no, I, yeah. I'll laugh at it. You know, yeah, exactly. if it's funny, I'll laugh at it. And you're probably going to be one of the first people retelling that right same joke. Yeah, yeah. Uh. yeah, like I, I, I fully lean into humor in hard situations. Like mm -hmm. my, right now, my mom is dying. She just went on hospice. I went and met with the hospice uh, social worker and my mom, and and she was trying to get a, a feel for what services my mom wants, and and my, you know she says uh, you know we offer massage service. My mom's like, oh I don't want that, and she's like, okay you don't have to have that, that's fine. And then I was like, wait wait can I use it? <laughs> <laughs> I flew ten hours to get here like. Yeah. <laughs> Kind of I mean, you know, if there's, if it's available. Yeah, like, like for, don't, like, don't let it waste, yeah, you know, like, I'll exactly. take it. <laughs> oh, man. 
Well, but, like, my mom is one of those people that gets offended at anything that is remotely, like, something that somebody else laughs at, you know. So, like, she didn't really mm-hmm. like that. But, you know, like, and, uh, yeah, that's just, uh, ever since I was a kid, that's the way it was. I was always baffled, like, Mom, why are you, like, not laughing at this? Is... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, it's funny. <laughs> you know, like, what? Uh, th- like you said... There's always some people who will be offended at things, but that is no reason to uh, not engage in a conversation or your product or your production. Right. Um, you know, there will always be haters. Haters going to hate, as they say. It's going to happen, um, but they're the squeaky wheels. They're yeah. the ones that people see, and if they see... A couple people, they're they're like, well, humans are inclined to jump to conclusions and fill in the blanks and assume like, well, if there's like three people that that are cancer patients that are like, oh my God, this is, this is a really offensive movie, you know, then they're going to be like, well, this is offensive to all cancer patients. Like, no, you, you know, you might actually be doing a lot of good for, for those people by telling that story. I mean, they are, after all, just stories. Yeah. It's a story being told. Like, it, if that offends you and you can't go on with life after hearing a story being told, then, you know, you got bigger problems than that story. Uh, you, <laughs> maybe, maybe maybe look in the mirror. Get in yeah. perspective for a minute. Yeah. The other thing to try to take away is is the idea of heroes. Mm -hmm. There is absolutely no reason. In fact, I would argue that it's unhealthy to create this idea that if there isn't a hero that aligns with something that you identify with, you must think you're a loser or like what, what this isn't a thing. Is it like, I, I mean, Plenty of black kids liked Superman, and he yeah. was white, right? Exactly. Like it, it's a, it's a fucking story well, it, about a superhero. The, the thing is, there are features. There are way more features that are in common with more people than the ones that are not common with people. O- yeah. Obviously, I mean, otherwise people wouldn't identify with that hero, like Batman or something, right? Like. There, I would argue that there are zero people on the face of planet Earth who couldn't find something to identify with Batman. Yeah. Like, okay, yeah, I mean, maybe he looks a little different. He's in a different socioeconomic status, but, like, there's so many other things that, like, everybody can get... Well, I mean, why was that movie so... Why, why is that franchise so popular? The, the movies, the comic books, all the Superman, same thing. Yeah. Like, people see themselves in these people, even if they don't quite align with themselves. Because, hey, people have this little thing called an imagination. Yeah. Um, if LeVar Burton were here today, um, <laughs> he'd be... Oh, like, if we right had him here. on the show. That'd yeah, so if he awesome. were sitting right here, he... he, he explaining that like yeah come on the show LeVar yeah like read a book like yeah book like oh god yeah Uh, like why do things have to be so specific and why I I just don't understand it like you know you I could identify with all kinds of heroic people whether they're men women Trans, like black, white, Alan in- Turing, Indian. Alan Turing kicked ass. Yeah, and he was gay. Yeah, but I'm not gay, so am I not allowed to find him as a hero, or, well, or like look at him as a hero? And, or, and I, yeah, I think he is because, like, I'm into. He kind of won the war for and, us, and everything. Uh, like, well, yeah, com- like, <laughs> we would not have computers today Mm -hmm. the way we have them if it weren't for Alan Turing. Um, Like, I I honestly couldn't give two shits about his 
home life and sexuality. What what matters to me is his genius mind that dreamt up all these amazing things. Like that 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 whole side that's that's his own thing. Like I'm concerned with the the science and the com- computers. Uh, uh, like what the what. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean when it, yeah, and when it comes to being offended, like, I think the general rule of thumb is just like, if you're not a captive audience, and you can get up and walk away at any time, then just keep it to yourself. Yeah, like it, if it offends you, you have every right to be offended. I'm not gonna fault you for it. I'm not gonna tell you how to feel, because I, I have no room to do that. But if you try to tell other people how to feel based on how you feel or act how to act based on how you feel mm-hmm. like you're the asshole yeah, exactly plain and simple uh-huh. like and and the the, the whole uh, impact is greater than intent it is bullshit like mm-hmm. that is pretty much just saying like if i feel bad it's on you to change everything to cater to me. What? Which is how, how are you super, not the asshole? Super duper selfish. Yeah. Like what are you the only person on planet Earth? Like there are No, of course they're like well if I'm here. offended, other people must be offended. Yeah. Especially no, the black no, people. No, it couldn't possibly be explained <laughs> that you're ignorant and a simpleton in your understanding of things and are building your uh, analysis of a particular thing based on that very limited understanding of things. No, that couldn't be possible. Must be that, you know, there's a bunch of people who intentionally made this offensive thing to offend people, uh, you know, and because I'm offended, then everybody else must be offended too. And well, if you're not offended, then there's something wrong with you. It, it's even weirder if you're one of the a person who's part of one of these groups that that should be offended, and you're somehow not. Like, well, you must be working for the other people, you know? Like, well, wait a minute, you know? There, it, it's the, the like Occam's razor thing. Like, you know, there might be a simple explanation for this. Maybe you're just dumb. <laughs> I, have you thought of that? Yeah. Like, and that, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, I mean, I'm an idiot. Like, I don't know anything, really. But I, it, it, I, I'm at least willing to admit that. I mean, uh-huh. like, it's just a weakness like anything else. And we all have our weaknesses. Mm-hmm. The important thing is to identify it, address it, try to improve it. Yeah. And And, you know, if you can look at yourself and say, like, am I the problem or is everybody else in the world not doing things the way I like it the problem? Oh, it must be everyone else in the world. Which, like, you know, that is a little bit like flat earth psychology or uh, yeah. like the, uh, like, oh, you, you know, there's this huge conspiracy involving yeah. like a billion people, you mm-hmm. know, because mm-hmm. like, okay, well, wait a minute. What's the most plausible explanation here is it that there's some iffy things that may or may not go one way or another that that you've decided uh facilitate and reinforce this particular uh like conspiracy or is it that like there is no conspiracy and you're just seeing things patterns that don't really exist is this pareidolia Mm. You're just seeing faces in clouds. Um, Absolutely. More often than not, it is the latter. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, I... Uh, you know, before we get too long-winded, we we should kind of move away from the, like, movie aspect of this Go Woke, Go Broke and talk about the Bud Light thing. Mm-hmm. Because that's... You know, we're taking heroes and, and things like that out of the equation... And now we're talking about, like, brand support. Mm-hmm. And, and from my understanding, what happened is 
uh, a transgendered employee created a, a commercial or some marketing scheme that was trans friendly, um, probably even in Pride Month, just like every other bandwagon uh, company was doing. Mm-hmm. And and now all the rednecks are like, oh, I'm never drinking Bud Light again. And and there's this huge drop in their stock, and everyone's pointing to it and saying, go woke, go broke. And it's like, well, who was that hurting, though? Like, yeah, I don't think it was hurting anybody, honestly. Like, I don't understand all the hate that Bud Light is getting. Okay, now, me personally, I think Bud Light is cat piss. It I is. would I wouldn't yeah. drink it, but I don't. I, I would I would immediately assume their stock is dropping because people are like, "Oh wait, there's good beer." <laughs> yes, Whoa. exactly. Oh, hey, it's not that much more expensive. Space okay. dust, you could sponsor us. Um, well, speak of cactus. <laughs> oh, hey, wow, I'm offended now. Oh, I better get on Twitter. Um, X. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. I love how in the first day, like, there was, like, a copyright thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, like, I, I don't really comprehend all the hatred, because it, it was just an ad campaign. Yeah. One of many ads um, that Bud Light has done, and, you know, they, to, to whittle it down to just this one with a trans person, um, as being like, oh, this is the defining moment. This is where I'm going to, you know, this makes or breaks my relationship with Bud Light. Like, who cares? Yeah. Like, I mean, if you if, if you don't like the ad, then don't watch it. Like, so what? Like, th- there's a lot of stupid-ass ads that but, but people still buy all kinds of products that have had, like, absolutely terrible ads. And... Maybe this is just a way for this company to connect with other people. I know it's more likely virtue signaling. It's some kind of cash yeah. Yeah. grab thing, but I don't have a problem with it. Like, honestly... Well, we've talked not... about this before. How does a company have a, a collective position on something? Yeah. You know, like, the employee... That made the commercial that was important to that mm-hmm. employee. Sure. Cool. And I've, I've seen the ads, and they're, like, not that big of a deal. It's like, okay, well, whatever. Yeah. This person just is all about Bud Light and is drinking it, and yeah. that's the ad. Like, so? It, uh, well, and they were showcased on, on some of the cans, but, I mean, you know, they do that all the time with all kinds of... They do it with sports figures and stuff, and no one's like, oh my god, I'm not a fucking Patriots fan. And they got them all over those cans. Like, I'm never buying that beer again. Like, wh- well, so what? There's a false, uh, like, correlation causation thing going on here, too, I believe. Because it's not Budweiser, it's Anheuser-Busch, right? Mm-hmm. Like, that's the parent company. And they just put out a poor product. And they've been buying up craft beer, Mm -hmm. trying to corner the market with their piss. Mm -hmm. And they're taking good beers and making them nasty. Yep. Like, and maybe people are just kind of like, maybe it has more to do with them getting in the spotlight over this thing. And then people being like, wait a minute, they kind of suck anyway. Like, if I'm going to drink beer... I want it to taste good. Yeah, and, and I think that's a pretty fair assessment. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it's just as plausible. It, and it could be that, like, this might be the straw that broke the camel's back, where mm-hmm. enough people were like, well, that's a strange ad, and then they're drinking their Bud Light, and they're like, oh, this tastes yeah. like shit. What am I doing? Yeah. And then people, like, and then you, this if, whole, like, wave happened... On the interwebs, yeah. where everybody's like, oh, because of this. No, I, you know, again, maybe the more plausible explanation is your beer tastes like yeah. shit. Like, could that possibly be the explanation? The beer still tasted like shit in the heyday of, like, the Bud Bowl and Bud Wars mm-hmm. kind of commercials mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Where it was like, 
really cute and genuinely brilliant marketing, but the beer still sucked. Yep. You know, and, and fuck, companies come and go. There's absolutely no good fucking reason to worry whether or not a, com- a big company or a small company goes under. That just happens. That's the yeah. cycle. That's, you know, it's like... the circle of life, essentially. Yeah. If, yeah. if Budweiser is not a thing anymore, oh well. Yeah. Like, I don't care. Well, the funny thing is, too, like, Heineken created... They got an ad campaign, but, like, one of my favorite mm-hmm. ads... That, that genesis is kind of, of the this show. Genesis of <laughs> the show. And Heineken's still around. Yeah. Like, they had a trans person... In the ad, and Heineken, though, no one, like, flipped out over that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. What the fuck? Mm-hmm. That is a great point. Like, I, 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 I'm I, going to point that out next time I see somebody, like, like giving flack to, to Budweiser. Like, like as, as much as I don't care about the fate of Budweiser... <laughs> Like, they are kind of unfairly uh, being attacked mm-hmm. by uh, people that are just uh, getting their panties in a twist over a, a rainbow. Yeah, exactly. Like, what What even is the, the problem? Like, who cares? What I mean, companies are going to company. They're going to do what they do. Yeah. And... Yeah, I feel like this whole ad campaign is a little contrived, um, but I don't think it is, like, that big of a deal. Like, it's no different than any other ad campaign. You know, does anybody freak out when the thing of the day is um, uh, the Marvel Universe movies and McDonald's has Marvel stuff as, like, the Happy Meal toys? Like, oh, that's just... That's just made up. Like, they just did that because that's the popular thing. Well, yeah, they did. So? (laughs) Like, no one's, like, boycotting McDonald's because they had, like, Thanos, tiny Thanos gloves in the... Well, I don't think they did, but that would would have been cool. Um, Or, or, you know, whatever the the popular characters of the time are. Um, They've been doing it forever. That, That is actually, like, a common trope in advertising and, and marketing is like, oh, you latch on to whatever is popular at the time. You know, mm-hmm. Angry Birds was a thing. I remember there was like Angry Birds little yeah. d- toys you could get a- a- in your Happy Meal, like fling the birds and you put up little stuff and, and no one's like pitching a fit over that. Like, it, it's no different. Like, <sighs> yeah. And, you know, Okay, you know, nine times out of ten, a lot of these ad campaigns are done purely to ride the wave and to appear to be a, a particular way, whatever the thing of the day is. Yeah, yeah. But that 10% of ones that are not could be culturally significant. Yeah. And, like, even McDonald's can affect change culturally, yeah. in a good way. Yeah. Um, the bad way is, you know, everybody gets heart attacks. <laughs> um, <laughs> the important thing to remember is, um, shit, I don't remember. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Couldn't have been that important, right? <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> so, like, marketing is basically just about creating the idea of, like, oh, I'm thirsty for beer. What do I want? I don't know. Bud Light. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the first thing that comes to mind. That's the only point of these marketing things. Has absolutely nothing to do with whether or not it's a good product or not. So, like, put, like, weigh accordingly how much, like, stock you want to put in, uh, like, boycotting something over one goddamn ad like yeah why like well then boycotts don't even work half the time no they don't more than half the time yes you are correct um and and, you know it just like movies like i was saying earlier about having a character you can identify with um products are the same way 
having a trans person as a spokesperson for that moment in time for a particular product that people in who who are that way can identify with that particular person and maybe they'll go out and buy some Bud Light when, when they're thinking, hey, I'd like a beer. I'll buy Bud Light because there was someone like me who was drinking Bud Light and is all about it. Like, I don't... How is that wrong? Like, how is that a problem? Yeah. Like, I mean, and honestly, is your... Are you so unsure of yourself that one deviant ad that breaks from the tradition of Bud Light advertising, like, that's enough for you to just like, oh, nope, I can't handle that anymore. Like, okay, yeah. well, you, you've got bigger problems to right. deal with than, than just, like, one series of ads that they've made. I, I gotta say, it is super funny to me that the type of people that tend to boycott things for being woke tend to call other people snowflakes when they're the ones that are like ooh kind of the snowflakes that's you know? a really good point yeah like well, you're, that kind of you're goes into what I was just twist. saying <laughs> yeah over a commercial like okay I thought you were some kind of hardened tough guy like you could handle anything but oh no an ad that your favorite beer, like, it's, there's somebody you don't agree with or somebody different there that is a spokesperson. Oh, that's too much. I can't handle it. You know, what, you know what happened, I think. Somewhere along the line, Bud Light kind of tapped into the patriotism angle of marketing. Mm -hmm. And patriotism is big in this, you know kind of southern redneck culture and so of course like they're all about the Bud Light and everything and then Bud Light goes and does something that is a little bit contrary to what the southern rednecks tend to you know like mm -hmm. and and they're in you know like it, it's kind of like the people that are like when did Star Trek become woke Oh, it's like, wait a minute. It's been woke since the 60s, Yeah, bro. like, it like kind of started you, that way. If you don't I mean, know. Like, oh, my God. I mean, look at any Gene Roddenberry quote. And mm -hmm. it's all about, like, it's all about everybody accepting everybody as the only way to move into the future. Mm -hmm. Like, differences are just that, differences. Well, and... and they don't make us better or worse. No, they're just, they just make us different, mm -hmm. which is, I, I mean, you know, subjective. Uh, yeah, yeah, subjective is the key word, because, mm -hmm. like, yeah, differences do make people better or worse in the eyes of each individual. And in certain contexts, yeah. right? Like, if you're stronger, that might be an advantage in one Thing. Or if you're like, say, taller or shorter, that could be an advantage in a certain context, but a disadvantage in another. Um, yeah. I, hmm. That, oh, yeah. That's this is a killer episode. This is really good and and going very very deep. Well, like like you brought up patriotism, hmm. I, and you know, to me. That's kind of a nebulous concept that, like, it isn't, and, and I, I don't know why, like, it would be stronger in one region of the country than another. Like, it should be something everybody embraces, I guess, uh, to some extent. Uh, well, to a limited extent. I, a I, you very know, limited like, extent. Yeah, I, I don't believe in, like, nationalism and the, yeah. the, the country being a big deal. But, like, you know, your people, right? Whoever they are. Um, I get that. But, like, your people include the, the others as well. Like, the, the fringe people are still your people. They're, they're like, if... It goes back to this whole concept of, like, if it... Well, it's actually kind of a Gene Roddenberry thing. Like, if, if aliens invaded the planet tomorrow, 
we would not be looking at each other as like, oh, well, wait a minute. You're, you're one of those people. You're one of those people. You're, you know, oh, you're fodder for the aliens. No, it would be like all hands on deck. <laughs> defend planet Earth. Like, yeah. nobody would care about anybody's differences because the fucking aliens are coming down in their motherships. And, like, lasering everything. I actually and don't have a lot of hope that we would put aside our differences I, at this point. I, you know, like, this is actually, like, we're in season five now, and I'm a German resident now. And it's super cool to have this perspective when we're talking about something like this. Because, like, the flag and all that stuff, mm -hmm. that is not a thing in Germany unless they're in the World Cup. Like, yeah. And then it's like, well, that kind of makes sense. You know, it's fun. It's just a competition. And when it's over, it's over. And people put their flags away. But, like, here in America, flags are, like, yeah, despite the flag code that people claim to put so much faith in, uh, <laughs> they'll put it on shirts and stickers on their trucks and stuff. But Maybe you're not supposed to do that. Uh, yeah, like, yeah, that's that's technically disrespecting the flag, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, like, but they'll still claim to be patriots. Yeah, and, and you know that actually brings up the question of like, what is a patriot, and why does that fucking matter? I don't like, think it does. The, that's that's the important thing I bring up about Germany is like, when when you say like nationalism and and stuff like that that can really easily come from patriotism. Mm -hmm. um, they learn from their mistakes because what better example of nationalism is there than Nazi Germany? Yeah. You know, and then they were like, wow, we like... That was a boo-boo. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's something we don't want to repeat. Well, and uh, <laughs> maybe the reason why it's not... That kind of analysis isn't as prevalent in the U.S. is because it hasn't yet happened here. And I say yet because... It hasn't it? What about the Native Americans? Like, oh. right off the bat. Oh, yeah. Right off the bat. Okay, yeah. However, in the U.S., we name counties and streets. <laughs> and oh, names, well, everything's fine you know, now. Like, I, well, I mean, <laughs> you know, it's kind of weird that, like, okay, if we just want to erase all that, how come we're so into that? I think that's virtue signaling too. Honestly. It could be. Like it, it very well could be. Um and and I mean like there's some give and take on that, like, you know, Mount Rainier used to be Mount Tahoma mm -hmm. and people are like, Oh, you can't change it back to the original, blah blah blah, that's that's too woke. Well it's like, well, I mean, that was its name. Yeah. Um <laughs> and and I mean, you know, there is like like a thousand years of precedent there. Yeah, so like, like uh, I, mean, I mean, yeah, I, it doesn't bother me. It's just a name. It, same here, and honestly, it's kind of a cooler name than Rainier. Yeah, like, uh, Rainier doesn't even. It's not even pronounced the way it's spelled. It should be Rainier, right? Yep. Hmm. Anyway, uh. <laughs> like, but the, but the the point is like, this whole country is founded on. Gent side, and we fixed it by pigeonholing the people that we almost completely wiped out into these little reservations and said, Hey, you can be sovereign. I mean, yeah, you're gonna be super poor, mm -hmm. but you know, like, that's, well, that, that's, that's our, that's that's our that's an educational thing, reference. unfortunately, that, that like being. A sovereign territory, they could very, very easily take command of that situation and do some amazing things. And so, some tribes are, um, but, but I yeah, think I, I think they know that there's like the looming threat of being squished again mm -hmm. uh, from like like the U.S. is like. Kind of like the, the the mafia, if you think about it. Yeah, kind of. They're like they're like here's you know like yeah, here's some reservations for you, and you're sovereign, mm -hmm. and we'll protect you for a price. 
You know, like, well, the, <laughs> the difference is that you can reason with the mafia, uh, which is why I think like I'd much rather deal with them than the government. Um, but you know, that's a point well, well presented. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the Japanese in World War II as well. Like, I, I don't feel safe in this country. Uh, like, I feel like. And, you know, I should theoretically have every advantage, but I don't feel safe here. Um, and that should say I, something. I mean, you're spot on with that. Like, I feel so safe in Germany. Like, it is so quiet and serene and people get along. I don't see, like, evidence of crime everywhere. And things are pretty strict. Like, you can't argue with a stranger and call them a name. You might get sued. But nobody's doing that. And, and you know, like, oh, well. You know, like, if, if you can't be a dickhead to somebody, like... Well, but what if that... Is that really that important to you that, you know, like... I mean, I guess it depends on the circumstances. Like, there could be situations where that might be necessary. I mean, well, the idea the idea of freedom is so, like... I, I, think, I think that's a lot of propaganda. Like, what well, we consider freedom to we be. We should definitely do an episode about that. Mm -hmm. um, because I feel like we're going down a tangential path that could be a whole different episode. <laughs> it would be. Um, and I think it would be a really interesting one. Like, I, I'm really interested in that. Mm -hmm. um, oh, man. Wow. That, that should be the next episode. Yeah, I, yeah, I think so. <laughs> like, freedom in general. Because that, that too, is subjective. Um, oh, man. Yeah, there... I mean, we could do all, an entire season on differences between Germany and the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and they are pretty uh, different, actually. Mm -hmm. um, different, but same. They are. They are. Like, it's it's not all that foreign, mm -hmm. really. I mean, I don't... I don't feel like I'm in some strange culture... Mm -hmm. It's it's not that hard to adapt to, and and yeah, the, like, there's some stuff where I'm like, oh wow, this is how you do it. Well, I mean, like, I'm not gonna leave Germany now because of this, but like, you know, and I think that's the thing. Like, a lot of people here in the U.S. think like, oh, if I couldn't do this or that, well, I don't think I could live with that. But like, yeah, you could. I bet you could. Like, yeah. like if you really think about it, like, how important is that? Actually. Like, actually. Well, yeah, I mean, and, and that, there's... V versus, like, there's a not lot of being what a, ifs. Not having the right to be a dick to other people. Like, how well, important like, is that? Like, like, for me, I guess it would be, um, I don't want a bunch of overlords telling me what to do. Like, because I don't think they're smarter than anybody else. Um, but they are anybody else. And, and, you know, like, they cycle. So it's not like one dictator... Unless they're in Congress in the U.S. And then they right, right. Cycle. I'm talking about Germany, though. Yeah. Like, you know, like, a, a place that's actually done things wrong and learned from it. Whereas and maybe the that, U.S. still has a lot of learning to well, do. Well, maybe that, like, that, that might... Like, it was kind of insinuating in that, that, like... That might be the difference, is that the U.S. has not made those mistakes right. well, in the past. Or well, we haven't, the applied, US has we haven't applied the lessons. absolutely made those yeah. mistakes. We have not applied many, the lessons. Many, many times. Yeah. Yeah. But they haven't been so egregious and dramatic as to warrant attention in that regard. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's a whole episode, too. Because, yes. uh, like, some of the shit that the U.S. has done... And and kind of done like the the PR thing to make it seem a lot less 
drastic than it, it really was. Rug, like, I mean, like, like Guantanamo Bay, oh god, Tuskegee, uh, mm-hmm. Japanese internment camps, the uh, the shit going on at the Mexican border right now mm-hmm. in this day and age, like. All of this shit, like, and the Native Americans when we mm-hmm. fucking came over here, we weren't even a country yet. We oh, and that's that's like, only like the, slave trade, like, like that's only the tip of the iceberg. The fucking a bomb on yeah. uh, twice, yeah. yeah, two times. Oh, yeah, it was like gonna be more. The U.S. is like the world terror. Uh, like, well, and and that was we're the you know, bad when, guys. I mean, <laughs> you guys are the bad is, guys. I'm German now. Oh, if I can put this clip in, I probably will, if I can remember. Are we the bad guys? <laughs> um, but yeah, like, it, it's kind of funny that, that you know, back in, like, the early 2000s, post-9-11 and stuff, like, oh, we gotta stop terrorism and stuff. It's like, you guys are the terrorists. Yeah. Like, take this, your shoes is, off. Yeah. yeah, we stop terrorism. Yeah. <laughs> Like, wh- oh man. Okay. Well, I think we might stopping terrorism one stocking foot at a time. <laughs> oh, God. there needs to be like a waving flag behind me and like an eagle scream. That's actually more of a hawk. A hawk. Yeah, uh, it's a hawk. <laughs> it's a hawk cry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Eagles sound like squeaks. Um, you know, nice, nice uh, spokes. Bird, um, <laughs> I somehow I like I kind of think that um, and it's bald. Yeah. <laughs> somehow I think that like the turkey that um, was proposed uh, would be a better spokesperson uh, for the U.S. Uh, or spokesbird. Yeah. Huh. Oh, well, I don't know. I think I think we've. Rambled on long enough. Yeah, that I would was... like to hear people's thoughts in the comments. I'm sure there's going to be some some thoughts because we pushed a lot of buttons uh-huh. here. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we, but... did, we didn't even get into this Jason Aldean song or whatever. Have oh, you heard about that? I have not. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I I haven't heard the song, but it's called "Try That in a Small Town." country i guess and uh sounds like it would be yeah and i guess it's it's maybe loosely about this whole woke thing and Hmm. you know like try being woke in a small town and see how that goes sort of implications and stuff like that it it rose me really the wrong way that like this is even a thing like what is wrong with being different what is wrong with that's the thing like Like, i i challenge anyone to watch this episode and try to put us in a box yeah are we woke or are we bigots (laughs) nobody is gonna get it right because like it really depends on the circumstance yeah and and even more than the circumstance. I mean, there's so much that goes into uh, whether or not, like, something is is a hill worth dying on. Mm-hmm. And and that's that's the thing that people really have to try to understand with this whole woke or not thing. It's like that's not even a question. Yeah. Like, it, there are going to be things that you're intolerant of. For no good reason. Mm-hmm. All of us have that weakness in some way or another about some thing. And some of us get over it in time and some of us don't. And, and that is what it is. It's not a good or bad thing, necessarily. Like, because it's possible to go overboard with fixing a flaw. Right? Well, and, and like, speaking from the standpoint of, like, reality... Like, there is no real state for these things. Like, what is woke? What is a bigot? Like, define it. 
Yeah. I don't know. I, like, shouldn't we all be striving to just be good human beings? And yes, we're never going to actually achieve that. Like, that that's an, an impossible task because we would have to have a comprehension of the universe in a beyond human way. And we just can't do that. Yeah. So we work within the limits, the confines of, of our understanding. And it's limited. Like, it, we don't know everything. And, you know, you, you've got your upbringing that's a factor as well, and parents and the culture around you telling you stuff. And it's probably not real, um, more than likely, um, no matter where you go on the planet. And so, uh, I don't know. Ooh, I, this is a, this I mean, is a really... <laughs> people can actually, like, right now, go back to season one. Mm -hmm. And we had an episode uh, during Pride Month... Uh, because you know we jumped on the bandwagon, and <laughs> but yeah. but not like just to jump on the bandwagon. I mean, it, like the whole thing was about like how ridiculous it is to uh, that this should even be a thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like why is it that we have to fight to say that hey, LGBTQ plus or whatever, it is normal people that yeah have different sexual whatever mm -hmm. right but even in that episode i think i mentioned like the only thing is like i don't understand transgenderism not that i have a problem with it it's just i don't understand it like i can't put myself in those shoes yeah and then uh, a couple seasons ago a friend of mine came out as transgender. Cassie. Yeah, we interviewed mm -hmm. Cassie, and, and uh, like, Cassie was super cool about answering all these questions and stuff, and that was, like, a great conversation, a great way to, like, come to understand a little bit better, mm -hmm. and now it's, like, you know, like, I still have that, like, twinge in my head, like, I can't put myself in those shoes, but, like, at least I can understand other people's perspectives about, like, you know, like, things that matter to them that don't even matter to me. Like, mm -hmm. I'd never even given them a second thought are actually, like, a huge deal to them. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, what their gender is doesn't really align with what their sex is. And those two things are so different. That mm -hmm. I do understand. Uh, <laughs> And but, that's that's a good lesson, I think, in yeah. in tolerance and understanding. Like you can see growth in this show. Yeah. Like and and it's that easy. Like just a conversation mm -hmm. is all it takes. Well, yeah. And that's important. Like if you don't understand something, don't just dismiss it and push it away. Like attempt to understand it. Like especially if it's something that you feel strongly about like if you if you have an emotional reaction to something well that's the time you should be extra careful to try to understand something yeah and maybe you may never understand something and but that, that that's fine but at least try at least yeah. have a conversation you know like people you don't understand like whoever they are that and, and and this is it's disturbing to me that the delineation is so tight um, that, that, like, oh, it's only these couple of factors that, that, that matter. It's like, no, it, there's a lot of stuff that matters. Glasses. You know, <laughs> I was a nerd back in high school because I had glasses. Yeah, okay, I was actually a nerd. But people assumed I was. was. Because I had... Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> but people assumed... Because I wore glasses, that I must be one of those people. And, like, they made a lot of completely ridiculous, um, or drew a lot of ridiculous con conclusions about me, which were wholly untrue. Like, oh, well, you know, you must be into this, this, and this. 
Um, and no, I'm actually none of those things. Um, in fact, I suck at math. I don't suck at math now, but I did then. Um, and, Be- and because of aliens. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's another yeah. episode to, to go oh, look for. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. You know, like, I just had a revelation. Like, the only thin line there is between bigotry and understanding is tactfulness. Mm-hmm. Like, you either want to try to understand or you just dig your heels in mm-hmm. and decide not to. You know, Ooh. like, it's okay to ask it's okay to not understand something so, yeah, exactly. and ask questions in a respectful way and say like, you know, instead of saying like, oh, you're different. I don't like you. It's more like, Hey, you're different. I want to understand that. Mm-hmm. You know, like that is literally the only difference between being a bigot and being someone who grows. Well, <laughs> yeah, because like a bigoted person is closed minded mm-hmm. typically and and doesn't want to hear any any other side. They've concluded that their idea is right. Um and any other angle is dismissed outright. And okay, before you think that you're not bigoted, you are. That's the, yeah. like Everybody has the propensity for being that way, just in different capacities. It, yeah. Like my big one was marijuana. Mm-hmm. You know, like I used to be so, so against that yeah. for no good reason. Yep. And like eventually, uh, I thought I'd never overcome that, but like, you know, I did. Mm-hmm. And, and I still maintain a healthy amount of skepticism about its medicinal value. Yeah. For instance. And that's fair. But, it like, there's actual, like, science behind that to say, like, you know what? It's, it's not, like, the miracle drug that people claim it to be, but there are some potential benefits. And it's not necessarily the heinous drug that people right. proclaim it to be. Yeah. Well, and, and and I think that that's the important thing too is overcoming bigotry comes down to one simple step, and that is asking why do I think the way that I do? Yeah. Like ask that question to yourself and try to answer it, well, and I think you'll find things. <laughs> will change rapidly. And the knee-jerk assumption is that will be uncomfortable, but it actually feels pretty good to say, hey, I used to be dumb, but now I'm not. Mm -hmm. You know, like, uh, growing is cool. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, it is. Well, you know, learning and experiencing different things and and challenging yourself, like, we should all be doing that. Um, that We should... if, if, If you... If you have concluded that what you believe is entirely correct and that you have all the answers, well, you're probably wrong. Uh, probably. Just going to say that, well, you know, yeah. just trying to leave it open to people. Yeah. But, yeah. It, like, it's that important is, to ask questions. That is pretty and, arrogant, though. Like, yeah. to, to, to not want to change is kind of a, implying that you kind of think you're right about uh, something well, that, like, I don't know, is there even a right or wrong? I, I don't know that there is, but that that's a, a whole nother debate. But it's important to note that, like, you know, where does this belief come from? Like, if you're simply told something then you can't take it as read that that is factual. Like, the only way to feel confident about what you believe is to have tested it in the field of battle. Like, you know, you've gone out there and and analyzed things and conducted research and collected data and stuff. Okay, sure. You're probably closer to the truth than somebody who has not done that. But there are so 
so many people who have not done any of that and are a hundred percent sure that what they believe is right. Mm -hmm. And well, maybe you're on the right side, maybe not, but how would you know unless you've actually tried it, like yeah. tested these things? That's the important thing. There really need to be science classes that are all about testing hypotheses. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, like, an example that came to my mind when you were talking about that is um, the mythos of how to keep bananas from going ripe too fast. <laughs> and I didn't even conduct these experiments myself, but. I have applied it and found it to be uh, correct as as the data suggested. Um, I was a grader for a class that did this experiment, like trying different things and recording their data on how many days it took to get, you know, like a certain percentage of black spots on the yellow exterior of a banana. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I'm, I, don't know, I graded like 80 papers or something. So like an N of 80, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, each student had to do a handful of different methods and compare them uh, with their own, you know, data and and then the class came together and compiled their data and and such and i saw it bear out time and time again the ripening process slows if you separate each banana from the bunch hmm. um so it didn't involve adding an apple no to the bunch no apple no plastic bags no refrigerators just separate them taking care not to accidentally like partially peel one because then it's gone in like an hour yeah um but if you just separate them as soon as you get home from the store and set them somewhere in room temperature they last longer huh and and that's that's how science works yeah it does it's pretty simple yeah it's like and and I guess Fuck around and find out. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I guess that's my point, is like, we can't just assume the answers that or the conclusions to things. Like, there has to be evidence. Like, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. I think that was Carl Sagan who mm -hmm. said that. Mm -hmm. um, oh, rest in peace, my bro. Um, I, like... But so many people live their lives completely detached from that. Like, they're happy to assume all these things. And just, like, generations of people have these notions about how things are when there's no evidence for it. Like, citation needed, right? Isn't, <laughs> isn't that the thing, you yeah. know? Like, ah... Uh, I, I just, I guess I implore people, if you, if it's something insignificant that you really don't care about, eh, don't worry about it. Don't beat yourself up trying to find the answers over something insignificant. Although maybe there could be some, some fruits in there. But if, if it's something you believe whoa, whoa, strongly. Whoa, fruits? <laughs> that offends the gay people. <laughs> so... Oh, even though okay. I'm not gay, I'm telling you what the gay people don't like. Well, you know, so let's say flowers that have become inseminated by bees. Inseminated? Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the point is, like, we should be critical of ourselves and what we believe. And, you know, maybe not so quick to, to judge. I, I don't know. I... Uh, Things are complex. They're not. They're not simple. Like yeah. life is not simple. The universe, though complex, I mean, I mean it's not simple. Um, there's not like just a small handbook of 
the Ten Commandments that we have to draw on. I mean, that's nonsense. Um, there's a lot more going on there. Um, so you know, think deeper. Have conversations. Like, challenge yourself. Like, feel uncomfortable. There, there's nothing wrong with feeling uncomfortable. Like, being offended is healthy. It, it, it teaches you how yeah. to deal with the difficulties of life. And life is difficult for everyone. Everyone. Like, because, well, hell, though different people start off at different um, spawn points and have different loadouts in their game, um, everybody's going to die. Yeah. Like, there's a finite existence to this life, and everybody's going to have to face that at some point. No, ma It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter what your sexual inclivities are, like, what hobbies you have, what cast you fit into. We're all going to die. We're all mortal, and it's coming. So I, I, I don't want to end on a downer. Though. So maybe you could like and well, like lighten things up a little bit. Give us a little buoyancy. Like I think I mentioned before, like the, the thing to remember is like if you feel offended by something, ask yourself, am I a captive audience here? Because mm -hmm. if you, you know, feel some kind of sense like you are stuck in this situation and you're being offended over and over again, probably the other person is the asshole there. But if you have every opportunity to walk away uh, and you're expecting other people to change their behavior just to accommodate you, you are the asshole. So, ah. you know, like, if if you're at a, uh, at a job or something and, like, this is all you can do, like, and your boss is sexually harassing you, you don't have to put up with that shit. No. You know, like, but it, you know, like, if, if it's a situation where you go to a movie theater strictly for entertainment purposes and there's a joke in a movie, well, like, don't jump on Twitter or X or whatever the fuck it's called now and be like, don't go see this because I was offended. Because <laughs> then you're a dick. Like, well, and, and that offense is, it's subjectively derived. Like, yeah. it, it's not, <clears throat> so, maybe, maybe this is uh, a good way to end things. Oh, am I going to get all Jerry Springer, maybe? <laughs> like, post-episode Jerry Springer. Um, being offended is is something you do to yourself. It's not something someone does to you. Mm -hmm. Like, you do it to yourself. It's your own observation and analysis of the world around you that generates that feeling of offense. Like, if you think about it, the universe is just matter and energy moving around. Like, People talking is just like muscles moving and vocal cords wiggling around and air moving. Like, they don't really mean anything. Um, you offend yourself. No one else can do it to you. Like... It, I, I get what yeah. you're saying, yeah. Yeah, like, like, yeah, like it's a, the perception reality thing. Like mm -hmm. the, you, the way you receive information and interpret it is strictly your own machination. Like, yeah, um, you might interpret somebody's words incorrectly, and. I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say you might even be pattern seeking in this Ooh, uh, yes, situation true. and looking for a problem where one may not even remotely be.
begin to exist. Well, that's like pareidolia, too. Like, humans are pattern-seeking creatures. Like, mm-hmm. you see a bunch of clouds or grains of sand, and you see faces and shapes and things, where it's like, okay, it's just gas in the atmosphere. It's just sand on a beach. There's not an actual face there. You're simply looking at that and your brain is looking for a pattern and will, like, it's, like, actively seeking a pattern and if there's something even remotely close, (laughs) it'll fill in the blanks and be like, yep, there's a face there. Um, Right, but why would Jesus, an all-powerful being, appear on toast and not yep. just standing in front of you. Well, yeah. <laughs> and it's the same thing with, like, the, the EVPs and stuff like that. With ghost hunting, there's, like, it'll be like, burp, burp, burp. And, and they're like, oh, that said, like, oh, I killed your mom. Like, well, wait, no, that's a, it was just, like, a bunch of mumbles. I love those like, ghost shows. Shit, yeah, like, they're like, uh, what was that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. Was that Sigmund Freud that said that? I I think think it was Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton. No, man. Oh, well, that's going down a whole other rabbit hole. Popeye the Sailor Man. (laughs) (laughs) But, I mean, the the important thing to, like, is that... Rabbit hole? What is your goal in life? Is it to spend your entire life being tormented by, by being offended? Or is the goal to just get along? Like, to me, the goal is to get along. So I will ignore all the noise as much as I can in favor of the positive. Like, hey, we should be getting along. Isn't that what we want? Like, ugh. I mean, maybe we do need an alien invasion to, to set us right. Huh. I don't know. We need Winston Churchill. Yeah. And TR. Both of them. Yeah. yeah. That'd be amazing. Well, okay, yeah. I think I think we've Yeah. The batteries are probably, dying on our uh, little tiny probably turn this fire a two parter. Yep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I'd love to hear your comments down there in the comment section. What do you think about this? Like ideas like you know we're we're just a bunch of dudes we we're not geniuses cis white male dudes (laughs) whatever that means (laughs) so like share your comments and you know let's find answers together and and you know make the world a better place um and final mini diatribe just because you're cis white male doesn't mean your opinion doesn't matter mmm Talking point. point. That's a really good point. Continue that shit in the comments. We (laughs) gotta take pisses right now. Yes. Okay, so... Cis white male pisses. (laughs) Although the funny thing is we all piss yellow. Hmm. Well, you're not drinking enough water.